Ao niu e tōu pulonga, i tāni te ia hona tauwhatunga motu a. Ko whakatulo wat, ka a tā e whakalonga ho tauwhala, te ria e loto whare ia o e kari loa. I wouldn't forget uh, many years ago when I was a young boy growing up in the islands in Tonga. We came out with my dad this morning and uh, he said to me, can you hear that? And I said, it's just the sea crashing onto the reefs on the outskirts. And he started talking to me about the weather of that day. And I was puzzled. So I said to him, how do you know that? And he said to me, oh, it's nothing. And he continues on with his task. And later that day, we uh, went fishing, net fishing. And I carried the bucket, and he carried the net and the other stuff. And as we were walking on the beach, he said to me, Hush, can you see the school of fish? And to be honest, I didn't see anything. All I saw was just the rippling sea. I came away from those experiences wondering, what does he hear that I don't hear? What does he see that I don't see? So these uh, questions, these inquiries resonated with me all through the years. And it, I learned that things don't look, don't see as they look. And we have to go deeper to fully understand these things. And this res resonated up to this platform today. And it's an honor to share with you. And brings me to my topic, architecture of fare, architecture is hearing of Fanongo in our Tongan language. The Tongan fare, or known as fare for Lao, as you can see from these visuals, they are rectangular in the middle with ovoid ends on both sides. As you can see, the structure in the middle and the roof superstructure on top and the different stages of the building platform, the posts up to the top part of the fale. But may I take this opportunity to focus a little bit on the fale as a word. Fale is broken down into two words. One is fa, or to touch, or to connect, or to relate. But the word fale means the le part, which is the suffix, it means to set into motion. Like other words like lele, run, it means you run, you set into motion or cough, you project air out. So basically, in a condensed version, fale means to touch something, so you set it into motion. And that's important, because this process of fa happens in the invisible intellectual realm, like design, and it permeates to the physical world where you touch by hand and build these things, or the fare. And one of the things that happened in the 16th to the 17th century, when the first Dutch explorers, Shuden and Limea, when they arrived in Tonga, they say that these are heathens or pagans because they didn't see any temple houses. So they assume that we are just heathens. But what they miss they don't know about the complexity of the Tongan Fale programming, as I've shown on this slide. It is a, a dwelling where we do our living. It is a pavilion where we rest and relax. And it's also a temple where we worship God freely. So as you can see from this programming, we don't need to build a temple house. Our Fale, where we live, is also our temple. And these are spontaneous 
and we see life holistically in the fare, not as compartmentalized. And that brings me to the second uh, part of my talk, which is Taongo. Ongo, I see as space, or what most architects talk about. And um, I would like to, to bring us back to a quote by Bruno Servi. He says, architecture is spatial definition. So he's talking about space and it's being defined. For example, if you pull out your umbrella on a sunny day and push it out, you're defining your space like this carpet I'm standing on, that shadow is your space. So when it comes to Wongo or the space, it's not empty space, but it's about presence. Lotolotongo, we call it. And it's the living entity of a space, or va. Wongo, more importantly, is a duality. It talks about two things like ongo ma tu'a, ongo me'a. So it's always two. And to me, this is the genesis of how any relationship whatsoever come into being. It has to be two things, a person to a person, or a person to a thing, or even a person to spirit. And third, the other definition I see also is ongo is spirit. It means we cannot confine it, and it transcends all boundaries. So it's a free-flowing kind of a force or spirit that no one can contain. And ongo also can be perceived through our five senses, and of course, much more into our spirit as well. I come to this picture as one of the things I drew. As an artist, I sometimes draw things and explore my design with hands-on stuff. And um, when I drew this picture, I hang it up on my wall and I went away do my work after a few weeks, a couple of months. I came back and looked at it. And I found out something else when I look at it. If you see the circle in the middle, this is the kari or the headrest, the wooden headrest. It's a symbol of honor for the fathers. This is their pillow back then, not the soft stuff we use these days. So as you can see on that picture, what I saw is the, the father's head in the middle and the two children is bending forward, kneeling and holding him up. What's important here this picture is the key that unlocks everything in the fale for me. Over the years, it just unfold, but this is where it started. But this simple picture, which is a symbol of honor in our Tongan culture. This brings me to language, which is the third part. Briefly, every language has phonetics, and all phonetics have two strands. One is the spoken language, or Le Fagatonga. The other strand is the written language, or Tohi Fagatonga. But I realize the Fale is not a sub-layer to our Tongan language. It is the core of our Tongan language. As summed up by this diagram, the Fa at the bottom is how we touch by hand, or Tohi. Fagatonga. And the le on top is the le fagatonga. So by touching, by writing, we set that spoken language into motion. And again, fale is our language, which has a sound. It adds to my topic today. And uh, this part is how can we relate fanong or what I'm talking about today to architecture? How is hearing relevant to architecture? And this is one of my most important slides today, and uh, it's critical. Say, for example, in a dialogue situation, two people, as I've drawn on that uh, slide, I call it number one and number two, and number one is talking to number two, and 
he doesn't hear clearly or audibly, he has to adjust. Maybe proximity, move closer, to hear clearly, which is fanong. Just that adjustment that I call the way, that brings to being dimension, distance, and measurements. Hence, architecture is defined or born. As I say, it's important because without this adjustment to hear clearly or to see clearly, it's nothing, it's blurred. We don't get that picture properly. So they is the key word that I want to elaborate on at this point. How is this translated into our file? It's like this. I found out in our literature that we do not favor the secular phala in the older days. Why? Because I realized a secular plan is not popular because of our tapu culture. It doesn't breathe in that one, or manava. So what did we do? We, we cut that circle in half, as I've shown, polarize it, and the two ovoid ends on the ends of it. So it gives space for our culture to breathe. As you can see, the blue um, triangles, it's showing the direction of the movement, but also the singular column in the middle is also pushed out, forming the four columns inside. And this way, or this movement, or adjustment, is done in two ways. One is fata, which I'll go into the next slide, and the other one is unu, which is the horizontal movement. As you can see, We move horizontally as shown on the plan, but in a cross section, we lift the fata. And that is the meaning of fata in Tongan. We lift. I think a better example of how we practice culture up to now is our previous kings who have passed away. We have about 300 people to carry, mourners who carry him during his funeral. That is what the fata is about. But by doing all that, we create that altar in the middle part of Kanoloto or Fare. Not only that, but the way is a tectonic shift. Why do I say that? Because it not only moved in two dimensions, but it also moved in three dimensions. And I would like to quote here a quotation by Johann van Kude. He said, architecture is frozen music. And I wouldn't blame him because if it's a two-dimensional existence like the plan view of that diagram, we are only two-dimensional. But until we do the shift to the 3D spatial dimension, then we are liberated in time and space. How could I illustrate this way? I can sum up by two uh, historical events in our history in Tonga. The first king, Taufa Hau. We were at the mercy of the colonizers of the day back then. And he could, we could have, he could have given Tonga to any one of the superpowers of the day. But what did he do? He weighed to God. He leaned towards God instead of these people. And what happened? We were never colonized up to now because of that way to God. Secondly, when our late Queen Salote III went to England for Queen Elizabeth's uh, coronation in 1953. They were proceeding from the chapel to another place and the rain fell. And Queen Salote told the driver not to pull the cover of the chariot. Why? Because she weighed to Queen Elizabeth by driving in the rain. She's honoring her as higher than she is. So these are two incidents how I could convey concept of the principle of way. And this brings me to my summary of my talk today, which is, as I've stated here, from our position or tuanga, we could allow the fanongo to give us that understanding that we can make space for any relationship to breathe or be nurtured. 
And secondly, we have time and space to make that very spatial adjustment whereby we can optimize all the opportunity and possibilities where with sharpness and clarity we can truly touch, smell, and experience all the senses, even taste the full flavor of life. But lastly, we can transcend from the cultural to the spiritual, or we call it lot of Father Ia, to encounter God. And to transcend from the Fale dwelling <clears throat> to the Fale indwelling of the Spirit in us. Which brings me to this uh, takeaway snapshot of what I believe can sum up my talk today. The Fale's holistic environment of presence, as I've conveyed on this slide. But through Fanongo, we can navigate through this journey of time and space to dwell, to rest, and to worship and have our being. Thank you.